Coming up on New Media Tech, we have lots of changes around here we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about streaming live versus streaming live and downloading. And we're going to talk just a little bit about how to distribute your media. Coming up right after this. It's Monday again. It's time for New Media Tech. This is episode 14, recorded on June 17th. (laughs) This is Monday, uh, June 17th. And this is 8 p.m. And we do this show every Monday at 8 p.m. or right around 8 p.m. We do our best to try to make it by 8. Some days we're a little later. Some days we're a little bit early. Whenever we start early, we would be here chatting with you or whatever. But... uh, so there is uh, a couple of things this week that uh, I want to talk about. And again, this will be a fairly quick week compared to uh, what most of them are. Uh, we've made some changes this week in the studio. And we've been very busy doing that. Plus uh, the new network I mentioned last week, uh, we're trying to bring online. So we're just been very busy uh, and a little dismantled. So, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So uh, first thing I want to mention in the news items, and I mentioned I would keep doing this, uh, and it would be another four weeks after this week, is we are moving our YouTube channels from individual channels per show into one big YouTube channel for text and TV. And uh, you're, if you're watching us on YouTube and you're using the old uh, new media tech or TZ New Media or whatever it is from YouTube, it's all going to YouTube. Dot com slash tech zen tv the shows we are watching you're recording right now are going both places for the next few weeks just so that if you are not moved over yet and you're watching this video you get reminded i'm going to remind you again before the show ends that you need to go over to youtube.com slash tech zen tv and subscribe over there um, we are up over 300 subscribers in the last, just since we've done this two weeks ago. So people are moving over, not quite as fast as I had hoped they'd move over there, but it is uh, slowly, slowly doing that. And uh, we are, all the shows that are now on our website, or if you're watching them, are coming from the new YouTube channel. So if you're looking at the shows on the old channels, you're going to notice that they are getting very little view counts compared to what they used to get because we're now sending everybody to the new channel. And on the new channel, you notice most of the videos have very low view counts except for the new ones we're putting up there, which have higher view counts. So it's a little bit of a mess, but in the long run, this is going to be the best solution. And we're also going to change around some of our social media as well. We've always had separate Twitter accounts for each show. We're going to start combining them and using hashtags instead. We're going to set up a fan page for each show. We're going to go to one fan page for the entire TechZen TV network. Uh, again, that makes it easy for us to keep everybody informed without having to go to multiple places. So that's just something as part of our redesign that we have decided to, to do. We are using pro, uh, Playlist on the new YouTube channel, by the way. So if you're really only interested in just one of our shows, you don't have to go through and watch them all. Uh, you can just do the playlist for the show that you're interested in. So that we're going to keep the best of both worlds by doing it this way. Or at least that's what we hope to do. And again, I will remind you again for the end of the show and for the in four more weeks after this one. Uh, I think episode 17 is the last time I'll be reminding you that uh, we need to move to a new YouTube channel. All right, so that is the front end news. So let's talk a little about like, what's been going on here this week. So you may notice a few things different. Uh, you may see that uh, we now finally have the monitors behind us working, although they're not really in this shot very much. As I'm looking up on the screen, I should have probably adjusted that a little bit. But uh, you also may notice some different lighting changes. Now we have to still white balance our cameras. We haven't done that yet, but we're kind of waiting to get the lights done. And, you know, typically it's always been, everybody says three-point lighting, three-point lighting, three-point lighting. Well, that's like, I think it came from Van Gogh as the one who did three-point lighting. It's considered very artistic. And if you're shooting a movie or uh, if you're shooting photography, three-point lighting still, I think, makes sense. But... If you go in, you talk to the new lighting guys that are doing all these television studios, they laugh at you when you say three-point lighting. And that main thing is they want you to be lit 
uh, full front uh, a full way across you. In fact, they actually want a light coming like right in from this way, right, almost right from the camera, because it puts some kind of little glare on your eye, and it, that people tend to relate to you better that way. In our case, I don't think we're going to be able to quite do it that way, but we've adjusted our lights so that instead of having uh, a key and a fill, we now have basically two keys uh, evenly spread across the front. So I should be pretty evenly lit across the front. That's that's the goal. Uh, we're not quite there because we have a little bit of a diffuser in the one light that we haven't taken out yet. But uh, if I look at myself, I see I'm fairly well lit. And instead of doing a, a soft back uh, or a hair light or a shoulder light, whatever you want to call them, we're now using hard lighting uh, just to accent that and separate me from the background. Now we're also going to try to color the background a little bit and do some other lighting effects in the back behind me there as well, which will give you a little bit more dimension that we've been missing with this brick wall behind me. So uh, the other thing we've done since our last show is, I think I mentioned last week that I was using uh, these. Uh, it's kind of caught there. There we go. These Manfrotto uh, mounts, and we started implementing these this week uh, for all of our cameras. So the problem we've we've had is we were hanging monitors, and I'm going to do another studio tour video here um, very soon, but the problem we've been having is that in front of me I have monitors and cameras on basically what is an upside down mount for uh, multi monitors on your desk. So here's like a little clamp, and actually, I, they're not have anything close to me that I can show you, but they're a, a, little, a little clamp that goes on your desk, and you tighten them down, and they're, you know, yay, so tall, and they, they're designed to hold two uh, 24 inch monitors, I think. I think what the size are supposed to be. And what we did, we put one monitor on them, and beneath them, we would mount a camera with a roll bar camera mount uh, right onto that pole. And the problem was the cameras were very high. So this week you should notice that you're more almost right in front of me. In fact, you're probably like, the camera's probably like right here on my head versus last week it was up here facing down. It's just a weird angle. So, uh, you know, it didn't like that angle. So we started putting these new poles on. Basically all we're doing is taking a pole that we got from Lowe's that I think is uh, normally used for uh, putting sprinklers in or something like that. And it's about the same width as what we had before. So we're using everything else the same. And we uh, put that in front of us, lower the camera. That also allows us to put more monitors in front of us. So uh, it just seems kind of funny that I need yet another monitor. But because of the whole thing we're trying to do with Wirecast, uh, I need another monitor in front of me as well. And that is here, although it's not being used because uh, we've had problems with getting the Wirecast to work. Uh, the way we, we have implemented and we didn't have time this week to sit down, down and play with it so uh, maybe this week we'll get a chance to do that for next week so that was a lot of changing around as well so between the lights and that and a few other things that are going on uh, with the new network it, it's all that it just got very busy this week so uh, lots, lots, lots of changes going on and uh, in fact I mentioned in one of our previous shows some other shows that we um, recommend that you watch or listen to, whichever way you like doing that. And uh, one of them is uh, Broadcast Now. It's on the, the Tech Buzz network, tech, the techbuzz.net. And uh, tomorrow I'm actually been honored to be a guest on the show. And we're going to talk about some of the studio um, layout that we have here. And maybe sometime in the next couple weeks I'll actually maybe show you that video that I created uh, for that. and Or you can just watch the show tomorrow and just get it that way. Uh, that works just as, just as well, too. Because uh, it kind of walks through some of the things. Now, the th things have changed since that video was recorded. We've actually gone through and uh, made made the changes with the poles and the lights since we recorded that video uh, a week and a half ago. So there's a few things like that that have changed. There's also a few other things around. Uh, we uh, used to be the camera. There used to be a camera like mounted. You can't really see it. It was supposed to be out of, out of range. Sometimes you'd see it in the shot. Uh, there's up here. We've actually mounted that up on uh, a pole up above us that's actually using the same kind of clamps to hold it there. And uh, we use that for the show comp after this. Now, that's something I gotta fix before the next show because it's not working. So I got a little ways, a little time here to uh, fix that before I get that show started. And that show is Let's Make It and it records at 9 p.m. Uh, every Monday. And let's see, what else changed in here? Well, a couple things in behind, like I said, the TVs, you can't see the, the TVs behind me uh, or the monitors behind me, but there is stuff on them. Uh, I need to adjust the shots a little bit so we can get a little bit uh, better view there. But uh, And we also have some co the colored lights we used to use for the, the background. We're going to mount them up there so we get a little bit of color in the back as well. 
So uh, a few things have changed in the layout that's kind of messing me up a little bit. Uh, the camera's on the different side of the pole, so I rearranged the ATEM monitor. And you can see, can we keep looking up there because it's distracting me? Um, it's something that I kind of got to work through as well. So there's a bunch of little things that happened this uh, since our last show. And uh, we're trying to get it all together. It's almost like it's a constantly changing thing, which uh, is fun, but also a little bit stressful to... Uh, come in first time of the week that since the changes and this is the first show so sorry if i'm a little distracted not looking at the right place on the camera all right so uh last week we talked about audio and we're still talking down the audio track and speaking of that i think i almost have the uh, video done for how to set up your soundboard i spent a lot of time this week working on that as well and i'm just now working on how to distribute it and hopefully this week I have that done as well. And it turned out pretty decent. In fact, I think about uh, maybe trying to either borrow or find another soundboard, some different soundboards, and go through and do a couple of these, maybe different types of soundboards. And uh, I mentioned before that we're talking about maybe um, actually putting together an equipment package. So if that's the case and I decided to do something like that, what I may end up doing is um, taking and using the equipment that's in the equipment package and just showing you um, how to configure that and just, you know, include a lot of stuff together. All right, so let's go back here to our list of things to cover this week. So I want to cover a couple of things. First, and I've had this, this I've changed it a little bit because I've had some of these questions. And I kind of mentioned this before. Do you stream live or do you do, you do only downloads? Now, I don't say do you stream live or you download because you should always download uh, for your podcast or your video, whether it be video or audio, you should always set it up so you can download it. That's how we get most of our views, uh, that and uh, YouTube, both between the two of them. So the next question is, do you stream live? Well, that's there's sometimes some costs involved with that, uh, and you have to make the decision. The advantage to streaming live is you can have an interactive audience. And if you your show lends itself well to an interactive audience, then yeah, go ahead and try it live. Um, when you're first starting out, though, don't count on that live part because it takes a little while to build up an audience. And you just don't want to have your show based upon like uh, live people to talk to and interact with and not be able to have the show if you don't have the interaction because you may be able to get some people to come in uh, in the very beginning and help you out. Uh, in there talking back and forth. If you have some friends that are in it, especially if it's something like a gaming thing, uh, your friends that are into the same gaming, you can maybe get everybody in and start talking. That's a little, little bit different. But like uh, the new MediaTek show, to me, has been a very slow starter. And that's because it's a very niche uh, audience. I mean, you know, I'm only a niche, I'm only interested in people that are trying to either do a podcast, interested in doing a podcast, or are doing the podcast or have some studio or want to build a studio. So it's a, it's a niche thing. It's not like it's a lot of people. So I can't come into the show. And yes, I'd love to have people in the chat room right now. I have nobody in the chat room for this show. And it's because it's a very specialized um, t you know, subject. If I was talking uh, about something gaming related, especially some of the more uh, popular games like Minecraft these days, I can probably get some people in the chat room uh, fairly quickly. And I have lots of friends that do Minecraft and I could probably say, come talk, let's come, talk, come talk to me about it. I don't, I've tried playing Minecraft. I, it just doesn't get me the 8-bit thing, you know, so uh, not really my thing. But that's the kind of thing that determines about your show. Does your show have the ability to have an instant audience uh, in the beginning. So if not, you may want to consider starting out with just uh, downloads and like if you're doing video, do downloads and YouTube uh, to get started. So that's the first question. Do you stream live and download or do you just set it up for download? And let me just say, the bulk of podcasts you get like on iTunes are not streamed live. In fact, uh, some of them that are kind of live, basically you're using something like a drop cam. Like uh, we have a drop cam here, it's up there. You can go anytime to the website and go look at the drop cam and see what's going on in the studio. Uh, you can kind of like the behind the scenes kind of view on the camera. But that's how people are doing it. They set up a drop cam and say, if you want to come uh, watch us live, you send you the drop cam and, uh, or some other kind of webcam that's basically streaming out to Ustream with a little computer sitting off to the side and some audio being sent to it. Very basic stuff. And that's how they start out doing their their live uh, their live stuff. Um, you, if you're just doing audio, you can always have people just stream your audio live and interact with you in the chat room as well. So there's a couple other options for live and there's some I've experimented with. Um, 
And one of them is using Google Hangouts. Now, we tried this on one of our shows uh, that we did for American Idol, the American Idol Fancast. And I'm telling me to say, it didn't work out as well as what I had thought. When you open up a, a, um, a Hangout to the public, you don't know what you're going to get back. <laughs> Let me just put it that way. There were some very interesting characters that came into there, uh, and um, you just don't know. I mean, you almost got to have a predetermined group of people that are willing to come in and chat with you, or you can invite people in uh, manually. So, yeah, be careful about that. It's still an interesting thing to do, especially if you know people. Now, it's nothing saying uh, one of the things about uh, the – broadcast now show that i'd like is they typically do a hangout afterwards with a lot of people that are in the chat room but you don't get the weirdos that are coming in from youtube just looking around for to do a hangout uh with somebody or, or google hangout they're just you know looking for a public hangout you get people that are invited interested in the same subject you just talked about that's a whole different thing that's a great way to do a hangout but just don't go out into a hangout and say it's a public hangout because um let me just say that it's, it's an experience the, uh, it's one of those things where I wish I would have had a like a 10 second delay on some of that. So uh, just keep, keep that in mind. Um, so one of the other things that I want to uh, talk about is remote guest solutions. And I kind of mentioned this a couple times in the past. But what we're going to do is we're actually going to set a whole show aside uh, next week to talk about the different ways of doing remote guests. And there are a number of ways you can do them. In fact, there are some ways now that I think are that I used to look at and say, nah, it wouldn't work, that that may actually work. Uh, we use Skype for the most part, um, but I'm going to start experimenting with some other ones. I've actually recently, not too long ago, used uh, Gtalk, and it worked incredibly well. I, I haven't used Gtalk in forever, and uh, I was very impressed with the quality that we got out of it, and we did it because Skype was acting up. And, uh, I mean, the quality probably wasn't overall as good as when Skype was working good, but for... What it is, it's actually not a bad option. Um, in fact, I'm keeping it in my back pocket as for, for uh, emergency fallbacks. Uh, I'm going to look at maybe using some FaceTime. And there's also a couple other things that are, that are around. A couple things I'll play with, I'm not even going to bring up. I'll tell you what I played with and that didn't work well. <laughs> but uh, I won't actually try it. But I'm going to try to set this stuff up so we can actually maybe try it in studio. So if you'd be interested in maybe helping out next week, uh, being on the other side of a conversation to see how the video and audio works. Uh, send me an email. Just you can send it to mike at techzen.tv or just send it to newmediatech at techzen.tv tech-zen.tv The dash gets me every time. Um, and let me know if you've been interested in, in either being uh, the other end of a Skype and the, or the other end of a Gtalk or something like that. Uh, like I said, I may do a, try to do a FaceTime if you're uh, a Mac or even an iPad or an iPhone for that matter. Uh, try to something like that. Uh, again, FaceTime is only on uh, the Mac, though. So I was trying to be a little bit more generic than just the Mac. But we can try it and see what the options are there as well. And I might even try to experiment with a Hangout at some point. Um, but because the Hangouts have changed a little bit since we did the, uh, the uh, Idle Fancast because there's a little bit more control over it. Um, you still have it kind of closed off on the edges so you can't hide everything. Uh, and the only way you can really get around that is to blow up the video to full screen. And with the ATEM that I use, I can't, I don't have that ability. It doesn't have the ability to make any changes. So, um, we may try to use that when we get the wirecast working through desktop presenter or something, something similar to that, maybe bring it in. So, uh, another thing we can, we can try and let you know how. How that works but we're also going to look at it from an audio point of view only so when we do this testing we're going to uh, test the audio and see how the audio translates from side to side and also the video so you can see maybe you're just doing audio podcasts and you'd like to be able to bring an audio guest in and the other thing i will try to do is maybe you can set up so people can call in and we can see how skype sounds when somebody calls you on a regular landline phone to your skype and that'll give you a good idea of another option. The cool thing about Skype is Skype itself is free. And if you want a landline phone, it's like $50 a year. And you don't have to worry about running any kind of cables. It just comes right from the computer. So that's not a, a very bad option. It's a very great option, actually. And uh, that's actually how we do our call-ins is through Skype. We do not have a hybrid system. That would require me to have a phone line and, and all that stuff. And I don't need to do that with Skype. So it solves a lot of that problem. 
All right. So uh, one of the things we were going to talk about this week is how to distribute your media. But you know what? I came into this today with no time and unprepared. So I'm going to tell you kind of how we do it. But uh, I do plan on uh, maybe even for next week or the week after getting together a list of the different uh, places you can go to distribute your podcast. And it doesn't matter. I'm going to give you a list of audio and video both and some of the pros and cons that I found. Uh, but for this week, what I wanted to pretty much do is just tell you kind of how we do it. We don't do it like the average person, <laughs> I don't think. Uh, from what I've heard talking to other people, to other podcasters, they uh, they do it through either uh, a podcasting service uh, where you pay for the space and they generate your um, your files to go up to like um, iTunes or wherever you want to distribute your RSS feeds to. They generate the RSS feeds. Some people actually do it using a plugin for WordPress that generates the RSS feed and they just find somewhere to put the files uh, and to download it. So what we've done is we actually have uh, a dedicated server that we use that is an FTP server. That's all it does is store our video files. There's nothing else on there. If somebody wanted to get in there and take anything, I'm sorry, nothing's out there. So no databases or anything. It's just a, a big, big server with FTP on it. Um, and we upload our shows to there all kind of automatically through some automation we have here. But it's stuck up there, and we then have a custom written application that we use that generates our RSS feeds. And because it's custom written, we can do some really cool things with it. Um, we actually have an outsourcer that uh, she is like our admin. And as we do new shows and stick them up there, she pretty much adds them to anywhere she needs to add them to, including the software. And when you we add it in, basically you give it the uh, some basic details. It kind of knows the structure of our system, and it goes out and based on the name and the episode, will create an RSS feed for uh, audio, HD video, for uh, HD iTunes, SD iTunes, and then what we call the high quality HD uh, feed. And it'll go out to the FTP site and it'll figure out what sizes everything is and create the whole RSS feed. And, and when that happens, uh, it puts it into a database and then we have our other things like our iPad app or iPhone app and uh, the Roku app that can come in and get a customized feed for that particular device versus the plain Jane RSS feed that we send to iTunes and uh, to other places like PodTrack, which I'll go to PodTrack here in a little bit, and FeedBurner. So uh, it's really quick. I mean, it takes her a couple seconds to paste everything in. Uh, and because it's all ready for her to go, she pastes it and hits the button. And 10 seconds later, it says it's done. And it's basically done all the back end work, including file sizes, uh, duration, all those stuff's figured out. There is no thinking behind it. And it is immediately in the Roku app. I mean, it is immediate. You can go to the Roku app and just scroll back down, and it's right there. It's that fast. We also can control all of our graphic, our images. Uh, if we ever wanted to move our podcast to a different location other than. Uh, we use PodTrack as our main location. If you want to move it somewhere else, like the FeedBurner, which we moved from FeedBurner, so we know this works, uh, we can go in the application and say, here's our new master feed. And everybody that's uh, that subscribes to us will get that notification saying, we've moved, here's a new location. And it's all done it's through a very nice uh, graphical GUI interface. And we are currently working on that interface to make it so that we can even track performance of the shows uh, we do a few pod track right now, uh, but we may want to eventually bring it back into our, our own system, which we're working on that right now. We already have some graphs and performance data, but we don't have it all in there as of yet. But this same system allows us to create categories. I can add a category to our Roku app in seconds. I can go in, click on the new category, type in the name, hit the button, and then as soon as I add the first show to that category, it's automatic. And we separate things by uh, show and episode uh, and we can bring things out in multiple different kinds of formats. So uh, we have a feed for each show, for each format. So every show has four different feeds. But we also have what we call network feeds, which is everything combined together in chronological order. And this software controls all this stuff for us uh, very, very quickly. And there's not much thinking behind it. So, uh, But and the main thing is we, have, we store our files on a private server uh, for you to download. So... That's a little bit different. Next, next week or week after, when I finally get back into this, I'm going to give you some places that will store the files for you. That way you don't have to go buy a web space somewhere to, uh, to store it like we are. And there's only a cost involved. There's a cost involved with us having a dedicated server uh, just for this. And we pay for that you know, monthly. 
but these other services aren't quite as expensive. And there's a couple other options where you can store files. And I'll go through all that kind of stuff when we get there too. Now, a couple of things that I mentioned are FeedBurner and PodTrack. And we used to use FeedBurner, and that's how we were trying to track our performance. But um, I'm not overly impressed with the FeedBurner numbers. I don't know if I trust them necessarily. But you can also use FeedBurner to generate your entire RSS feed. Uh, we've never done that. We've always fed them the feed. Uh, I can't say I really know, even know how to do that uh, for that. But we've now moved on to PodTrack, which again is free. And it will give us uh, all the detailed tracking uh, as far as what, what type of devices, where people are coming from, which shows, uh, and but which day is getting downloaded the most. And we have everything with it. We have Roku going through there. We have our uh, regular podcasts like iTunes, and we have Stitcher going through there. Um, the BlackBerry is going through there. Microsoft is going through there. Everybody is going through there so we can track what kind of devices and what types of media as well. So we can see that in this show, the audio podcast is doing better than the video or the video is doing better than the audio or the SD is doing better than the HD. Um, so we can kind of compare all that stuff. We can tell what even by area of the world, uh, what kind of m media or what type of device from each part of the world or what type of device is getting what kind of media. Uh, we can you know spin that in so many different directions and get those details out of PodTrack. Now, the other thing about PodTrack, if you're looking for an advertiser uh, for your shows, they can help you get the advertiser. They basically watch your performance, and when you get past 20,000, I think it's 20,000 per week or per month uh, downloads for a show, um, they'll work with you and try to find you advertisers for your show. So that's another thing to consider about PodTrack. Um, my only issue with PodTrack is there's no way to get the data uh, besides on the screen, back out. I would like to be able to download that data into like an Excel form or raw data form and be able to manipulate it and get my own information that's not available uh, currently with PodTrack. But they don't have that available yet. I don't know if they're even working on it, um, but when I asked about it, that wasn't, it was an unavailable option. So hopefully in the future that, uh, that changes. So uh, a couple of the other networks I'm going to talk about where you can distribute your podcast um, can do some of the same tracking data as well. Um, I am actually on one of them as well, but the tracking data is not as good as PodTrack. So I don't use their tracking data. I use it through PodTrack, but I'm still on their network. Uh, and I basically point them to PodTrack, so I get that the number back. So that's something for uh, a future show as well. All right. That's pretty much all I wanted to cover this week. Like I said, it's going to be a short week because I didn't really have a lot of time this week to sit down and prepare uh, with all the other changes going on around here. And uh, I just wanted to make uh, a couple of comments. And I want to come back later on about the uh, where and how to distribute your media with a lot more detail because there's a lot of different places you can go out there. And I want to try to get some input from other people as well. In fact, if you're watching this show and you use something that I have talked about, uh, please let me know and I will make sure it's included in the future show because I want to make it as comprehensive as I possibly can. And before we go, one more reminder, we are moving to one YouTube channel. If you're sitting here watching us and you are still watching us on youtube.com on the new media tech part of YouTube, you need to go like right now. You can stop because I'm not going to talk about anything else. Go to YouTube and go to youtube.com slash techsndv and click the subscribe button so that you don't miss the shows as they move over to the new one. Because the youtube.com slash techzentv is our new home on YouTube. So, like I said, I'm going to remind you of this four more weeks. So, eight more times I'm going to talk to you about this. Uh, so, don't forget to go do that. That's very important. Are you going to all of a sudden see one day there's no more episodes coming here? Don't know why. That's why. So, very important. All right. That is it for this week. Uh, on the new Media Tech Show. We will see you next week.